so excited. Service is starting in five minutes. Please get your family, get everybody, text everyone you know, and join us for a wonderful service. I look forward to meeting with you. God bless. Thanks for tuning in. Our midweek Bible study will start in a few minutes. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy it. Text everyone, share it on Facebook, on Instagram, and everywhere. Our Bible study is about to start. I'm sure you are going to be blessed by today's teaching.
Come on, put your hands together. For the God who is able to do all things and he deserves our praise and worship. We praise your name, Jesus. Hey! Don't stop. We praise your name. Holy, holy, Father, you are holy. There is no one else like you. Faithful, faithful, Father, you, Father, are, you are faithful. We have put, we have put our, trust. our trust in you. Our God who reigns. Our God who reigns. We praise your name. We
out your name in the darkness and watch as your glory unfolds. There is no measure or end to the power you Justice and truth are your virtues But many too fast for our words No mind contains the splendor of all that you are And our God, our God has done great Oh!
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, indeed, all the praise be unto your name. All the glory, all the adoration, Lord, we ascribe to you because there is none higher than you, King Jesus. And you alone, God, are worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship and all our adoration. So we lift up our hearts before you this evening. Lord, we lift up our hearts in adoration and praise of your holy name, O oh God, to give you all the glory and all the honor that you alone are due. We reverence you, Jesus. We reverence you, God. There is none like you, O oh God. You're in a category all by yourself, God. And we pour out our highest praises, O oh God, unto you. We worship your majesty, O oh God. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this session um, this evening as we've gathered here both in person and in online just to fellowship with you, to hear what you're saying, to study your word, O oh God, to learn to be more Christ-like, O oh God. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you help us. We ask that you teach us, dear Holy Spirit of the living God. We invite you into this Bible study session this evening. Holy Spirit, have your way. You are the best teacher. We ask, O oh God, that you teach us the word. Let us have a deep understanding of what the Father is saying to us, O oh God, this evening. As we learn more about the person and the nature of the Holy Spirit, who better than to teach us about you than you yourself? So Holy Spirit, have your way, O oh God. Have your way, have your way, and teach us about you this evening. Jesus, let your name be glorified. All the honor and all the praise be unto you forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Bible study. I appreciate those who are always online and per always in person uh, because it's always good to have company in the house. So thank you, everyone, for coming this evening. And those who are joining us online, thank you for joining. If you can take a second to share the link as well. We are on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and you can also probably join on our website as well so that other people can be part of this Bible study session. Um, so today uh, we are talking, I know we're used to doing like a Bible study series pretty much in Agape for a season, but for the last couple of weeks we've not been doing a series, which is different, but it's good uh, because that way everyone can just really share what's on their heart and what the Father really wants to be telling us in this season as he reveals it to us. So I was, I was asking, I was like, Lord, what do you really want me to talk about? And it's instantly um, what came to me was the person of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's interesting that a lot of times when, as Christians, we talk about the Holy Spirit, and maybe not so much in the charismatic sets and maybe everywhere else, uh, but we talk about the Holy Spirit, and um, I think even in the charismatic setting too, it's the focus is not on the person of the Holy Spirit. The focus is always on his work and his gifts. I've barely ever heard a study on the Holy Spirit that there is emphasis on the person and the nature of the Holy Spirit himself, as much as the focus is always on his work and his gifts. And I'm not trying to downplay the work of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's so vital to the Christian life. But what I hope us to see at the end of this study that the understanding, having that fundamental understanding of the Holy Spirit as a person, his nature as a person, and the relationship with him as a person and his desire to be in communion and have that relationship is the fundamental stage before you begin to fully unlock and really experience the work and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it's almost like there was a jump from, instead of understanding stage one, we're, we're itching for stage two and stage three, you know? And it's interesting, if you ask a lot of people about the Holy Spirit and say, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Um, I could ask here, but I probably get a different <laughs> a couple of responses, but I have a question about who the Holy Spirit is to you, so I'll save it for that. Uh, but some people might respond in different ways and talk about symbols. They will say fire, they will say um, water, river, um, light, a still small voice, 
a dove. All these things are, are symbols of the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit himself. Or worse still, some people might say, ah, you know, when you catch the Holy Spirit, it's like you see someone in church and you see them um, react in a certain way or manifesting in a certain way, and the next thing is like, oh, they are, they are catching the Holy Spirit. And we see the Holy Spirit being <laughs> described in all these characteristics, but simply bypassing that he is God. A lot of theologians have actually referred to the Holy Spirit, unfortunately, um, that in, in the Christian world, he's actually the forgotten God. Uh, Francis Chan, I don't know how many people know about him, his uh, lover of God, missionary, someone who really has a heart for, heart for God. He wrote a book about the Holy Spirit, um, the forgotten God, reversing, um, <laughs> reversing, the forgotten God was the main title, I had a subtitle, basically saying, reversing the fact that no one talks about the Holy Spirit anymore, about talk about God the Father, God the Son, and not the Holy Spirit. Um, so hopefully by the end of this study, all that will change. I'll say one more thing before we read the introduction. Um, I hear this all the time. I hear people refer to the Holy Spirit as it, right? It's like it's um, or something told me. Something said I should go in this direction. Something said I should move. But you know something, uh, in, in culturally, even for me, the things that we fear as something is when we, is like an insult to somebody, right? When you want to downgrade someone from the, the nature of person that they are, it's like you're not even worth it to even be referred to as a person, as a human being. In fact, I'm gonna call you a thin. Can you imagine if you, you talk to a friend and say something, come over here, or something go this way, or something you told me yesterday, or, or you call somebody it. It's almost like the, the worst insult you can give a person. But So how is it that it breaks my heart, breaks, 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 breaks my heart when I hear Christians and believers call the Holy Spirit an it, or refer to the Holy Spirit as something? Uh, because it's more than just what you say. It reflects the deeper understanding of your heart of who the Holy Spirit is. So let's be conscious. And um, I'll read the introduction and then we can move on. So before one can... Okay, I was looking at my time. I was like, did they give me unlimited time? No, they didn't. Okay, good. Before one can currently understand the work of the Holy Spirit, we must first know the Spirit himself. A frequent source of error about the work of the Holy Spirit is the attempt to study and understand his work without first coming to know him as a person. So it is of highest importance from the standpoint of worship that we decide whether the Holy Spirit is a divine person worthy to receive our adoration, our faith, our love, our entire surrender to himself, or whether the Holy Spirit is simply an influence or a power or an illumination that God imparts to us. It's also of highest, um, if we think about the Holy Spirit um, merely as a power of influence, our constant thought will be, how can I get more of the Holy Spirit? But if we think about him in the biblical way as a divine person, our main thought or focus instead will be, how can the Holy Spirit have more of me? This is actually a quote by A.W. Tozer in his book, um, The Person and Work of the Holy Spirit. And I'm gonna read it again because I feel like this is so deep. And this is a key to knowing why it's so important to understand that the Holy Spirit is a person and not just the power of God and not just the anointing of God and not just an influence. So I read it one more time. So if we think of the Holy Spirit as merely a power of an influence, our constant thoughts will be, how can I get more of the Holy Spirit? But if we think of him, which is not a bad thought by itself, but there's even a deeper level to it. But if we think of him in the biblical way as a divine person, our main thought or our focus will instead be, how can the Holy Spirit have more of me? Which one do you think you'd rather be? Someone just looking to grab a concept of a divine power, a divine anointing, so you can walk into the room and demons begin to tremble. It's like you desire it not so much for the intimate relationship of the person or for the person to use you, but you just want to display power. And the next chapter sort of feeds into that, the next paragraph, and I'll read it before we pause to discuss some more. The concept that the Holy Spirit is merely divine influence or power that we are to get hold of and use leads to self-exaltation and self-sufficiency. However, if we grasp the thought that the Holy Spirit is a divine person 
of infinite majesty, glory, holiness, and power who has come into our hearts to dwell in us and take possession of our lives and use us, it leads us to respond instead in awe, in reverence, and humility. Because then, instead of saying, oh, I need more of the Holy Spirit so I can have the power, it's more of, I'm responding in such a way, I'm saying, wow, who am I that the King of glory chooses to dwell on the inside of me through the person of the Godhead, which is the Holy Spirit himself. So you see, you're, it, it, both, both leads to a believer operating on power. So you're still going to operate on the power and the anointing of God. So I'm not trying to downplay that at all, but the, the approach or the way you see that is fundamentally different. Thinking of, oh, I just need more of the Holy Spirit because I need more of the power. We quote Acts 10, 1038 all the time here. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil because God was with him. So it's like, ah, Lord, my prayer point each day, Lord, I need that power. And that's great. That's a great place to, that you need to pray that too. But even something more, more that is an act of surrender is Holy Spirit, take over me. It's not just about your power. It's not just about your anointing. It's not just about what you can do. It's not just about your gift. I desire to have a personal relationship with you. I desire for myself, my total being, my mind, my body, my spirit, my soul, to be totally surrendered to you so that you can use me in whatever way you choose to. And it's there that we really begin to experience the fullness of what God has to offer um, from that place of surrender. So I, I hope we're, we're able to grab but then I don't, um, I keep on saying this again because I don't want anyone to walk, walk away with that. Uh, Minister Norma is downplaying the importance of the, the anointing and the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. That definitely is not my message. I'm just highlighting and focusing. I'm sure there'll be different other studies where we talk about the work and we've talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit a lot of times, but I'm on the um, I'm highlighting the focus of the fundamental about the nature of the person of the Holy Spirit. Um, another way to think about it is trying to come up with different analogies so that to bring it so that it's relatable and we, we can think about it um, some more. Can you imagine if a man married a woman, he has a spouse, and every day she serves him this wonderful home-cooked meal, the best he's ever had. Think about whatever your favorite meal is. Some people may be pounded yam and goosey soup. I don't know why. Some people may be jello fries. Whatever your favorite meal is. Some people, I don't know, jerk chicken. Whatever your favorite meal is. Your wife, your spouse makes it the best you've ever tasted. They say the way to a, man, a man's heart is his stomach. <laughs> God will help the man in Jesus' name. There has to be a better way to your heart and not just your stomach. But anyway, um, so this woman makes your favorite meal all the time and you just adore that meal. You consume it, you feel good. You feel like you're happy. You feel energized. You feel like nothing else matters more in this world. Like you're, you're content. She, she, she takes care of the home. She acts like a motherly figure. You, you don't just see her as somebody who you, you just enjoy her meal, enjoy her taking care of the home, being a homemaker, enjoy her being an incubator to your kids, if you see her that way. And then nothing about her person as herself. Nothing about a relationship with your wife. You just see her or you value her just for what she brings to the table for you, for the, for the gifts that she gives you, for the food she cooks for you, for the children that she bore for you, for the wisdom that she offers you, but really nothing about the nature of who she is as a person, that she has thoughts, that she has feelings, that she, she can be grieved, that she could be anger, that she could be loved, that she could be happy. All that is just ignored to the side. And for you, it's just like, uh, my wife treats me good. She gives me all that I desire. She gives me, she makes me complete. She makes me whole. And sadly, I, I really was trying to crack my head for different type of analogies to bring this, but this was the best one I've got. But sadly, a lot of people, this is the way they see the Holy Spirit. He's, he's just a tool um, to, to manifest in, in, in gifts or the power and the anointing of God as, and totally bypass the person of the Holy Spirit himself. And meanwhile, it, it cuts short the, the, the fullness of what really God has for us. And the Holy Spirit, I really believe that honestly, above everything else, the Holy Spirit, what he really desires is a personal relationship with each person. He desires fellowship. He desires to be your companion. He desires to be your best friend. Um, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, something. So, if we, if the Holy Spirit is a divine person, and we do not know Him as such, we are robbing a divine being of the worship, of the faith, 
of the love of the surrender that he deserves. You can't worship an it. So if you're calling the Holy Spirit it, that means you can't even, you, you can't talk to him. You can't, you can't exactly advocate. He's an advocate, he's a helper, he's a much man. I, I missed our text, John 14, verse 16 to seven. So if someone can have that for me, I'll read it in a second. Uh, one more thing I'll read and then I'll, I, I would throw it out for some questions. So it is of highest importance from the standpoint of worship that we decide that whether the Holy Spirit is a divine person worthy to receive our adoration, our faith, our love, our entire surrender to himself, or whether the Holy Spirit is simply an influence or power. So we we read that one already. Um, It's also of highest importance from a practical standpoint to decide whether the Holy Spirit is merely some mysterious or wonderful power that we in our weakness are to somehow get hold of or use or, real, or whether the Holy Spirit is a real person, infinitely holy, wise, mighty, and tender, who instead is to get hold of and to use us for his glory. Okay, so can someone read John 14, verse 16 to 17, if you have it in the um, New King James Version? This is the first time I'm gonna use the New King James Version of Truth. Usually my go-to is NLT, but for some reason to really bring out some of the things I wanted, NJKV was the, was the preferred choice. So um, John 14, verse 16 to 17, anybody can read, it's totally fine. We have a reader up front, thank you, my sister. Yeah, it's our text, John 14, verse 16 to 17. Yes, okay. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. Thank you. I'll read it again just because um, her mic was off, so the online audience can hear as well. Um, John 14, 16, and 17. So, and I'll pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, and he might abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. Amen. This is Jesus promising us the Holy Spirit. So I have a question for the audience, those online and those in person. So who is the Holy Spirit to you? You don't have to give me Christianese. You don't have to give me fancy terms. Just think about, like, if, um, if they ask Minister Tyre, who is the person to your right to you, he would say, that's my daughter, right? So think about your, your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Who is he to you? Or if you don't have any, I guess you can say, and then we'll, we'll change that before you leave here. <laughs> okay, um, something I'd like to say is, you know, sometimes when, when um, the sale going on, they say, buy one, get one free. Mm-hmm. I look at it like you get Jesus, you get the Holy Spirit. It's a whole package. And, um, you know, without the Holy Spirit, we actually cannot do this Christian walk. It's absolutely yes. impossible. So it's like my body for life, you know, my BFF. Body for life. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Sister Tokes. Sister Grace. Oh, happy birthday, by the way, Sister Tok. Sorry. Happy birthday. I know you don't do this, but this is a woman of God who we love and we cherish so much in this house. So God bless yeah. you. Amen. Thanks, Sister so, Grace. This is, this is so, well, not funny, but it just brings into realistic um, thinking for me. When I was in the car today, so mm-hmm. I was going to go drop my, I was picking up my child, my son, and there was a commercial that came on, and the commercial they were talking about diabetes, and then they were talking about how for you to be able to cure diabetes, there's something that can help you to determine the diabetes at first. Mm -hmm. And the guy was alluding to, well, you know, since the fact that something can help you to trigger you to push you so that you don't have diabetes, they wish there was something like that in the earth that can help tell you what to do before you do it. And in my head, I'm thinking, we have the Holy Spirit. Spirit, (laughs) Like, I was just sitting down there. I was like, what kind of ridiculous commercial is this? I wish I could call them and say, okay, if you need help or guidance, somebody that can tell you, 
before you actually make a decision the mm. holy spirit is what you got so awesome. when you're teaching about this for me the holy spirit has always been okay god do you want me to go right you want me to go left do you want me to sit right now or stand up so for me it has always been before i make a decision god is this the right thing you want me to do so for me the holy spirit is like a guidance awesome me. i like that thank you my guidance compass direction navigation all of the above <laughs> uh, any other thoughts or any other comments i guess i would say uh, we have my sister up front and then we have brother edward all right here yeah oh. so i just wanted to like agree uh so i actually just got off a plane from florida and um I came here right after, and I was uh, teaching my friends about the Holy Spirit because mm. they're I, they're they're new believers, mm. and um, they always say like something told me, and I'm like, no, you have to say the Holy Spirit told you, so you can like build that up in you because it will start encouraging you, mm. and when you say like, oh, the Holy Spirit told me this, and then it makes you like encouraged to read your word. So mm. I just love that like everything I was teaching on. It's like being taught about today, and I just oh, came awesome. from the airport to here. Oh, wow. And um, I just feel like, you know, the Holy Spirit convicts me as I'm, like, still in this journey and being, like, a new newborn Christian or just starting over. And um, I just want to say thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. I think, Brother Edward, did you have your hand up? Okay. So I'll read some... I read some of the comments we have online before we see if we have any more questions from those and any more answers from those in the house. Uh, so someone said, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is my helper, a comforter, helper, helper, seems like the common thing. My husband said the Holy Spirit is my G. That's something like what he would say, of course. Uh, my inner alarm, okay, I like that. The Holy Spirit is my guidance again. That's uh, Sister Grace also. The Holy Spirit is my odogo. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> this is, um, <laughs> that's my husband. I don't know. Babe, please try to speak languages that we all understand. I know what you mean, but not everybody else does. Okay. Um, the Holy Spirit is my gossip partner. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys are cracking me up. I like that. That's just a, <laughs> that's just a Mechi on that one. So, <laughs> so I, I like the heart of where she's coming from. She's, she's coming from a place. She, she means that basically someone that I can tell everything and anything. I can talk to about anything. Uh, so not necessarily gossip in a negative connotation. Oh, okay. <laughs> and yes, yes, please. That's important. Gossip about you and what's going on in your own life, not about other people. Don't go and tell. Can you imagine telling the Holy Spirit, wow, <laughs> Holy Spirit, can you imagine what she said? <laughs> she did this. <laughs> nah, nah, no, 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 <laughs> definitely not. My powerhouse. Oh, okay. These are all very, very good comments that we have on here. Um, so I think that all the things we mentioned are so true about the Holy Spirit, yeah. navigation, helper, um, someone else mentioned, um, advocate, um, comforter, teacher, all those things. But I present to you, um, this, all these things are the essence of the work that the Holy Spirit does. But I, I present to you that the Holy Spirit perhaps wants to be known most out of everything that we mentioned, which he really is to us, because you can go on and on and on and on and on again. Uh, he's the one who, who tells us when we've missed this. He's the one who speaks to us. He's the one who calms us. He comforts us. He does all these things. He convicts us. The list is endless. You know, we can't be Christians without the Holy Spirit. But I present to you that the Holy Spirit, probably out of everything else, wants to be known as your best friend. Um, that, that's, the, that's the invitation, I believe, today. Um, someone who is the closest person to you, someone who you know that is your companion, that never leaves you, that is there by your side every, every single hour. Um, I think about, like, and think about, and, and that's why I was um, <laughs> laughing at Sister Meichi because I sort of understood the, the, the heart of what she was trying to say. Um, when something good happens to you, something bad happens to you, there's one person that is the first person you want to tell about it all, right? For some people right now, it's their spouses. Some people, it's their, it's their, their um, sister, friend, whoever that person is to you. But think about, do you know the Holy Spirit actually wants to be that person? that the first person you tell anything, the first person you talk to about anything, the first person you go to with any problem. And I think for me, 
um, the transformation really happened when I really understood that the Holy Spirit cared about every aspect of my life. I think sometimes as believers, we're limited when we think that we only go to the Holy Spirit for things that are in quote unquote spiritual, you know, like what chapter should I read today? Oh, Holy Spirit, I need to pray for this person. Teach me how to pray. Should I pray a prayer of uh, a command prayer? Should I pray a prayer of petition? What should I say? Oh, I need discernment. I, I don't know what to do with my, and all those things are great. And, and that's really what the Holy Spirit does. And he loves to do that. But but he's also itching to be someone's, as they call it, paddy. He's, he's itching to be that tight with you, that close to you, that intimate with you that he becomes your person and, and really your best friend. And really, I believe that that's the best way that we can start to enjoy the fullness of who the Holy Spirit is and his work um, in our lives. And God will help us in Jesus' thing. Yeah, so I said, the Holy Spirit is a real person, just as real as Jesus Christ himself, an ever-present loving friend and mighty helper, who is not only by my side, but dwells in my heart every day and every hour. Uh, he's our closest friend, guide, comforter, and lifelong companion. Okay, so now we're going to open some scriptures. Now I'll go through this within the next 15 minutes so that I'm, ne- I'm not out of time. That tends to be my, my, <laughs> my uh, thing in every Bible study. I always go off, but not today. I have the help of the Holy Spirit. Um, so the biblical evidence that shows that the Holy Spirit is a person, and why it's so important to actually know this, the Bible tells us to study ourselves approved, right? So some of us have transitioned into that place whereby we know that the Holy Spirit is a person. We know it's not an, that he's not an it. We know that he's not just a, a fire, a force, a wind, water. We know he's not just all these things. But let's say, okay, someone tells you, prove to me, show me in scripture and then we're, <laughs> we don't have any words to say. We don't know what to do, but that would change from today, right? Because we're going to go through a couple of scriptures that show that the Holy Spirit is a person. So the first one is when you talk about someone being a person, means that they have attributes of a personality, right? So that really is the definition of someone that's a person. They have will, they have knowledge, they have intelligence, they have thought, they have language. So we're going to quickly go through some scriptures that show that the Holy Spirit has all of this. Um, so the first one is a will. And First Corinthians 12 verse 11, if anybody has that, can quickly read. And if anyone can pick up the next scripture in that order so that we can go through them quickly. Okay, so First Corinthians 12 11 says NKJV, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Absolutely. So here we're seeing the Holy Spirit is having a will. He's given his gift to every single man according to his own will. Can a it have a will? Can a force have a will? Can a, a fire have a will? Can a dove have a will? The Holy Spirit is a person. Romans 8, verse 27. Anybody have that one? The second, another attribute of personality is thought. Some of the scriptures, the Bible scholars are supposed to know them from from memory. (laughs) Um, This is NIV. That's fine. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in in accordance with the will of God. Amen. Thank you, my dear sister. So the mind of the spirit, again, showing that the Holy Spirit um, is a person. So 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 to 11, this talks about knowledge, the Holy Spirit having knowledge. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11. It says, now God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man that is in him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Amen. Thank you. So the Holy Spirit knows and searches the things of God. And as we bring out this, um, I know the focus today is not on the work uh, or, or the gifts of the Holy Spirit um, in the life of a believer, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. But as we read about these characteristics and biblical evidence that the Holy Spirit is a person, you can actually see some of the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer also being mentioned. So we'll save that for another study, but you can already see glimpses of that. The Holy Spirit 
searches and knows the things of God. Um, uh, let's go to language. This will be the last one and I'll move on. So actually, let's read Acts 13, verse 2. The Holy Spirit speaks. Acts 13, verse 2, if anybody has that. Okay, Acts 13, verse 2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Amen, amen. The Holy Spirit is speaking. So all these, all this, and suppressing evidence just points and shows that the Holy Spirit definitely is a person. So now you have scriptures to answer someone challenges you that, about the, the Holy Spirit and his personality and him being a person. A um, couple of things, and this one's I might skip over and not necessarily read all the scriptures so we can move on. So highlighting also some scriptures that shows that the Holy Spirit is acting as a person. So the Holy Spirit dwells in believers. That's in John 14, verse 17. We read it in the text, so I won't read it again. Um, He teaches, he brings to remembrance. That's also part of the work of the Holy Spirit. That's in John 14, verse 26. He testifies, he convicts of sin, he guides into all truth, he hears, he speaks, he shows, he inspires scripture and speaks through it. He spoke to Philip, he calls into ministry, he sends forth his servants, he forbids certain actions, and he intercedes. So again and again, this is just more surpassing and mountain evidence to show that the Holy Spirit has a personality of a person because he has will, knowledge, intelligence, thought, language, and he acts as a person because he does all those things that a person can do. So I'll pause here for a question before we move on on how uh, the Holy Spirit being treated like a person um, with scriptural examples. So my question is, do you think majority of Christians regard the Holy Spirit as a person despite evidence and why? So people who grew up in church, or if you didn't grow up in church, if you, even if you didn't, was your first exposure to who the Holy Spirit was um, as a person, despite the suppressing evidence in the scriptures all over. The, <laughs> the scripture always talks of the Holy Spirit and says he, never says it. But why is it that it, it, it's still a struggle for some people, despite all the evidence that we have in the Bible? Praise God. So um, I'll come from the angle of the people that grew up in church. My first thought of the Holy Spirit is the one who makes us fall. Um, The first, the one who makes us speak in tongues. Mm. And the church I grew up in as a little kid, they would immediately touch your head. You have to fall. If you haven't fallen, like, you have really happening. Received. So I, my, yeah. So my, they will push you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but my, my first thought of the Holy Spirit was that he was a force. Like mm. he was a force and is the one that makes us speak in tongues. Mm. He wasn't exactly like, I didn't think of the Holy Spirit until um, like maturity. And I think the reason why we tend to forget is because we, as human beings, we are more inclined to, um, what you can see, what you can touch. Like, mm-hmm. if you can't see something, if you, that's why I feel like that's one of the major arguments for people not believing in God. So I think the fact that it feels like the <laughs> Holy Spirit is not something, it's not someone you can, when something happens to me, I want to call my friend and just tell her immediately, hear her feedback. But if you say I should speak to the Holy Spirit first, how, how am I sure? What, what, yeah, I just, so I think that's like the more reason why. Okay, I'll come back to that and that uh, to that in a second. I want to hear Sister Fuller, but thanks for sharing my birthday mates, Sister Fuller. <laughs> Um, So for me, I think my first introduction, I grew up in church, Mm -hmm. but I didn't learn about the Holy Spirit until I gave my heart to to Christ. And I started attending like believers class when I was in secondary school, as I was like 13. But what what, what I really learned from about the Holy Spirit then was, there was this person or an it, as you said, 
that you can ask, like, what is the answer to the questions during the exam? That's literally... <laughs> <laughs> Cheat code. <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> when I'm writing exams, I can, I can ask him. It was this pull pull relationship, and if I didn't get, like, an answer right, or so I felt I didn't, I, it didn't turn out the way I was, I'm like, ah, maybe I sinned, or something like that. Um, so I think what I, what I was missing at the time that I didn't learn was the friendship piece mm. and even still learning that every single part of my life is fair game. So Yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, anybody else? There you go. <laughs> Precious. And those okay. online you can respond to as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I think my own first experience with the Holy Spirit was um, fire. Fire. Not fire. Oh. That was the kind of church I grew up in, uh, where like literally the only thing you do is call down fire, and that's it's it's it was Holy Ghost fire. So it mm. wasn't like even a person of the Spirit. It was like this was the function of the Holy uh, Holy Ghost to bring you know judgment upon somebody or something. Oh, wow. And it oh. was I feel like the thing was um, it just has to do with teaching because mm -hmm. even growing up. Um, that that um, teaching about the love of Christ and how the Holy Spirit has been sent to help us and to comfort us was not there for me when I was growing up in church too. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you for sharing. And it, it's interesting. Did you have your hand up? Brother Jason, it's interesting that the stories everyone is sharing, it's almost not unique. It's almost like everyone until they came to some understanding or maturity in Christ and God opened their eyes to see more, every, almost everyone was exposed first to sometimes the works or the manifestation of the Holy Spirit first before the person and the nature of the Holy Spirit, which is actually the most important piece. Uh, Brother Chase, are you? Yeah. So I just want to say two things. Um, number one, we got to make room for the Holy Spirit. Yes. We got to make room for the Holy Spirit in our life. We can't crowd him out with activities. We can't crowd him out with noise. We can crowd them out with sins or other priority. We have got to make time to listen to the Holy Spirit because that's a priority in our life. Because if we do, then he will lead us into all truth. He will let us know exactly what God wants us to do in our situation. Amen. So we got to make room for him. Amen. And the second thing is we got to obey him. If we stop obeying him, he will stop speaking. Mm -hmm. If we want the truth about our life, mm -hmm. if we want the truth about God active in our life, then we got to obey him when he speaks and understand that he's telling us these things because he is for us. Amen. He wants the best for us. Amen. So, you know, I hope that sheds some light. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jason. I'll read some um, comments online and then I'll move on for the sake of time. Uh, so, someone is saying, um, my first, I guess, exposure experience with the Holy Spirit is a mysterious spirit that comes over <laughs> mysterious, that comes over people and enables them to speak in tongues. Um, the first for me is that the Holy Spirit makes me fall, especially through a breeze during laying of hands. <laughs> this falling thing is very serious. <laughs> uh, my first conception of the Holy Spirit was that the Holy Spirit was God's inspiration, more like God's mind. Uh, for now, he's my everything. Wow. Um, I, I didn't get any, the Holy Spirit to me is God um, as my first um, I guess, knowledge or encounter experience or what I knew about the Holy Spirit. So it's just, and this is sort of to even emphasize my point more so much more that there's just so much emphasis on, on the work and the, uh, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we, that's why Francis Chan wrote that book, The Forgotten God. There's like the forgotten part of the Trinity that he actually is God. Um, so the final part I was talking about in terms of the Holy Spirit being a person um, is that the Holy Spirit is treated like a person or can be treated like a person. And these are some scriptural examples that I would um, just move through briefly. So he can be lied to, Acts chapter five, verse three. Um, we won't read it for the sake of time, but that's the story of Ananias and uh, Sapphira where they came and um, they lied about 
the amount of money that they sold the land that they were bringing to share with all other believers. And then Peter, Peter, and then Peter responded to him, he's like, how can, you, how can you lie to the Holy Spirit? Look at the people that came to carry your husband. He was telling the wife, is right out the door and they're here to carry you out too. So the Holy Spirit can be lied to. He can be tempted. Another word for that in that particular scripture is tested. And that's the, the scripture that talks about the same story. He can be resisted. That's found in Acts ch- chapter 7, verse 51. He can be grieved. Ephesians 4, verse 30. I actually want us to read this one. Let's read this one so we can have a little bit more understanding of what it is to grieve the Holy Spirit. And whoever that reads it, can you read from verse 29 so it gives it context? So Ephesians 4, verse 29 to 30. Somebody have it? Okay. Ephesians 4, 29 to 30. No foul language is to come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need, so that it gives grace to those who hear. And don't grieve, the ho- don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. Amen. Thank you. So based on that, I'll go on to the rest in a second, but I, I just wanted to stay on this for a second. What do we get there with what it means to grieve the Holy Spirit from the context in that scripture? From verse 29 and 30. Actually, read verse 31 um, too, because it also puts that into more perspective. All bitterness, anger, and wrath, shouting and slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. Amen. Amen. So when we talk about grieving the Holy Spirit, what, what do we think we mean? Um, Sister Grace. Um, I believe, actually, using foul language, like mm-hmm. if I am a, I'm a believer of Christ, mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit lives within me, so then I sell it you know, raising middle fingers up or causing people, mm-hmm. you know, all this negative connotation, I think that that will be also considered grieving the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, I like that. Thank you, Sister Grace. So using foul and abusive language grieves the Holy Spirit. Um, Sister Tukumbo. So um, when you're talking about grief, it's something that kind of like heart-rending, right? Mm-hmm. Now, when we look at Romans 5.5, 5, it says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, because he's, he's, he's God, right? And he's the one who actually deposits the love of God in our hearts. When we start doing all these things, anger, malice, and mm-hmm. all of that, it's anti-God and it brings grief to the Holy Spirit. And for those of us who are, who are genuinely born again, you notice any time you do something wrong, one of the ways you know something is wrong is there's a quietness in your spirit. You know you've, you've crossed the line. Like, God is not happy. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Sister Tukumbo. That's a very good one, too. There's a conviction in your spirit. There's a check. So I have Minister Tayo and then Sister Ifi. I would say also taking the Holy Spirit for granted, mm. showing total uh, disregard and disrespect, mm. uh, not following directions mm. and, and advice, you know, from the Holy Spirit mm. that can grieve the Holy mm. Spirit. Absolutely. Thank you. That's one of the things I had here too. Disobedience grieves the Holy Spirit, taking him for granted. Um, Sister Ify. Excuse me. Um, I would say grieving the Holy Spirit, uh, the one that is very common like we mostly or always fall into it. You know, when you talk bad or mock the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. you know, for example, when you are in a place and the Spirit is moving and you're just talking bad, condemning, talking against what he's doing or talking against his his children, Mm -hmm. you know, his the messengers, the pastors, you're just criticizing and talking against them and talking against his, about his work, mocking mm-hmm. it, it grieves him too. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. Thank you for sharing that. that that's actually scriptural. In, in Matthew 12, um, what happened in that instance was people were attributing the work of the Holy Spirit to the work of Satan. And actually, some of the terms that Jesus used in that when he rebuked them was like, you guys are blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's the next one that I have. Um, the Holy Spirit can be blasphemed against. Um, you can be seen in, uh, that can be seen in Matthew 12. And then the Holy Spirit can be called upon. So all these things are things, more things in the Bible to show us that the Holy Spirit is a person, has a personality, acts like a person, can be treated um, as a person. Before I move on to um, emphasis on the Holy Spirit is God and really where I really want to land today, which is cultivating a deeper relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Um, I just wanted to recommend, so one of the books that I have read personally that really changed the way my relationship with the Holy Spirit was, was actually um, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. It's a classic. Um, there are free versions online, so being broke is not an excuse not to read it. And we're not broke in Jesus' name. And we're, we're wealthy children in the house of God. <laughs> but um, it's a book you can get. There are really free online versions. Um, but even, I'm sure there are used copies on Amazon for like $3, $4. I, I strongly recommend, I, I can't tell you, I feel like after reading this book, there was just a door that really just opened for me to really experience the Holy Spirit really on an intimate level. And I remember one of the stories that Benny Hinn shared in that, in that book. Um, he was talking about he was going to a, 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 a crusade, a conference, and he was going to meet this woman of God. Everyone was talking about how she was moving so powerfully in the gifts and the works of the Holy Spirit, and there was healing. This was Catherine Coleman. And um, he went to this meeting, and then um, he was just getting there, and then she was just sobbing like weeping, not just like a cry, not sniffles, like, like ugly cry. Like, and this went on and on and on for like over two, three minutes and everybody was just looking at her like, what is going on? Can you imagine uh, PJ, maybe not as PJ because you probably can't imagine PJ subbing. So I'll use PB because PB probably can't imagine. <laughs> So PB, can you imagine PB is a baby's climbing on, on, on the altar. She's about to preach. She's standing in front of the pulpit and she can't preach. She's just overwhelmed and just really, you can tell that something is, is aching her heart. Something is breaking her heart. So this was Catherine Coleman for two, three minutes. She went on. And then when she finally was able to speak, she said, please don't grieve him. Please don't grieve him. He is all I got. And she said that over and over and over again. And, and Benny Hinn used that to open his book because for him, at that point in time, he was just, he was a new-ish believer um, trying to, I guess, really understand the person of the Holy Spirit and, and know more about God. And he's like, this woman really was talking like someone was beating her child in front of her. Like someone was hurting somebody that she intimately and deeply loved. She wasn't talking like someone was hurting a force or a power. She was like, this is like, you, doing this to him is, is breaking me, it's killing me. He's like, it's all I've got. Please don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And, and then for me, that, that was like my captain. And then for when I read that part of the book, I almost couldn't put the book down. And he goes on and on and talks about his relationship and, and um, things that happen to deepen his knowledge of the person of the Holy Spirit. But I just wanted to recommend that before um, I forgot. And I'm going to move on because of the sake of time. My clock tells me I have 12 minutes. So thanks for those that contributing online. So griefing the Holy Spirit is when we ignore him. Him, not obeying his commandments. Someone also said that um, deliberately or inadvertently behaving in a way that that is inical, inimical to a spir to a spiritual improvement griefs the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now we know the things not to do that griefs the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God. I, I think this is a key piece also that is missing from a lot of our, our, our first at least initial exposure to the, 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 the Holy Spirit, not just the, not just the symbols, not just the works, but that he is God and he possesses divine attributes and he's co-equal with the, he's co-equal with God the Father and then God the Son. And the reason why it's so important to have this fundamental understanding the Holy Spirit is God, because you, 
If you don't, you deprive him of, of, of the worship, of the adoration, of the reverence, of the honor, of everything that God is due, and you just ignore, it's like, oh, God the Father, you can have my life, you can have my surrender, you can have the heart. Oh, God the, God the Son, you can have all that too. And God the Holy Spirit, eh, you're the, the lesser of the three. It's almost like we, we've come to see the Holy Spirit that way, except when it comes to call fire to fall down, or when you want to ask for an infilling of, of the Holy Spirit for somebody to speak in tongues. It's like, that's when we remember that that the Holy Spirit himself is God. And maybe sometimes I don't even remember that way, but it really so is important that we know that too. And these are some of the, the scripture references. So we know when we talk about this, when we share this, when we know this, there are scriptures to back it up. So um, omniscience, the Holy Spirit searches all things. The only person that can do that is a deity, someone with the divine attributes, that's God. Omnipresent, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. David said in Psalm 139 verse seven, where can I go from your spirit? Nowhere, the only person that can be everywhere at the same time, in your heart, in my heart, everywhere you can hide from him is someone who is God. So that's the Holy Spirit. Omnipotence, the, one of our favorite scriptures, Zechariah 4 verse 6, that says, not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. I love the scripture where Peter was saying in Acts chapter five, verse three to four, he says, don't you know when you lie to the Holy Spirit, you're lying to God himself, right? So this is other evidence in the Bible that talks about the Holy Spirit being God. And something else I wanted to highlight is that the Holy Spirit is God and he's a distinct person from God the Father and God the Son, right? Three different personalities, both God, but there are three different personalities. And we can see, well, I have different scriptures here, but I'll just quickly read one. So Luke 3, verse 21 to 22. Can someone read that for me real quickly? And then I'll pick it back on what you read. Luke 3, verse 21 to 22. Luke 3, 21 to 22. Yeah. Um, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Amen. Thank you, JV. Amen. Thank you. So I like the scripture because it's the scriptural evidence of this, of the Holy Spirit being a distinct person from God the Father and God the Son. Because you can see Jesus appearing in the flesh, right? Coming as the savior of the world. You see the Holy Spirit appearing in the bodily form of a, of a dove. And you hear another voice, which is God the Father speaking. So definitely the three distinct persons, that is all God. Um, the Holy Spirit also does the work that only God can do, which is creating. He was there in the beginning of creation, regenerating and sanctifying. Amen. Does any have any, anybody have any questions about anything I've said so far before I move to where I want to land for tonight? Any questions about anything online? If you have questions, you can also put it um, in the chat as well. So uh, I guess I'll take one or two comments about this question and then we'll move on to cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So are there ways that we consciously or unconsciously regard the Holy Spirit as less than he actually is, that is him being God? What causes us to regard the Holy Spirit as less than God? Any thoughts or comments? My sister up front. Um, I believe one of the ways we do it is because we constantly think of him as an outside force instead okay. of him indwelling inside of us. Mm -hmm. um, the word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So when you're saved, you're filled with a part of God and that is the Holy Spirit, he is God. Um, but I think there's so much emphasis on the manifestation that we forget that he becomes a part of us and we become whole, whole with him. Awesome, I definitely agree. Thank you for that. Um, Sister Grace. Um, by the way, uh, Norma, thank you so much for this teaching. Um, so for me, I've always thought the Holy Spirit was God. However, I think where I miss it is I've always known Holy Spirit, like if I ever need anything, I just, Holy Spirit help me, I need mm -hmm. strength at this moment, mm -hmm. I can't do it, I need strength, but I've always just, when I go to pray, I'm just going to God through Jesus, mm -hmm. and then I just put Holy Spirit on the side, mm -hmm. like 
Holy Spirit, I only need you when I need strength. And mm-hmm. I think it's wrong. Mm-hmm. So this is what I've learned today. Like, okay, yeah. you cannot do that. So yeah. thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Um, my sister. She, yes. you're, she's just sparking all the oh, thoughts wow. in my head. And I'm just like, <laughs> She's picking wow. it over. <laughs> yeah, so um, lately I've been like very bold for Jesus. I would text Pastor B that I left Bible study Wednesday and I went to Fridays with my brother and the three of us prayed for the waitress in the middle of Fridays and like so loud so on my trip to Florida (laughs) I was praying for so many people and um like my last night my uh, friends they are like super religious since forever and um I was telling them how I've been praying for people but it dawned on me I I just I just was like I want to start my prayers with like Holy Spirit, please lead me, guide me to know what to pray for them because mm-hmm. I'm just praying like Father Heaven, we thank you, Lord. In the, and then mm-hmm. you know I put in scripture and then I just you know ask them if, what they would like me to pray for them. Mm-hmm. And um, I I was telling my best friend I was like I feel like I don't have power. Like yeah, I'm using scripture, yeah, I'm praying, but I want power. But then I'm like I'm not even calling on the power, mm-hmm. and it like dwelled on me yesterday. So you, when you said that, it just sparked what I was talking about last night. Oh, wow. Awesome. Both of you should connect more because this is the second. <laughs> so after that, maybe you have a kingdom assignment since you're always feeding up each other. Um, so um, I would go into cultivating a deeper relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so number one sort of has been our emphasis throughout this evening. And I'm saying again, even for my emphasis, so at least you walk away and if there's anything you don't remember, remember me saying this, that having that, it, it, not just the head knowledge, but the fundamental understanding that the Holy Spirit is a person is a place to start. Uh, you cannot have a relationship with an it. You only have a relationship with a person. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is um, becoming more aware of his ever-abiding presence. So think about it. If you buy a brand new car for the first time, let's see a car you've wanted, you've converted, and then let's see you, 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 you finally got your car. Have you noticed that after you start driving your car, you notice more of your cars on the road than you ever did before? It's like, you know, it's like, how many people have this car again? It's like, if I knew all these people, number of people had this car, maybe I'll have changed the type of car I wanted to buy. So it's not, trust me, it's not because the number of people that have the car increased after you bought the car. (laughs) That didn't happen. It seems to you that way. But what actually happened was that you became more aware of that car because you actually have it. So... The Holy Spirit is always there, but you begin to have the, when you pay more attention to him, when there's a increased awareness of that, the Holy Spirit is there. His presence is there with you all the time. Um, that's when you begin to experience him more. That's when your relationship with him de- deepens. That's when you feel him more. That's when the intimacy increases because you know that his abiding presence is with you all the time. And I think for me, um, it really changed, especially when I was in college, it changed a lot of things. I did and places that I went to, you know? So I went to, I never used to be a person that um, was interested in going to things that people my age group were interested in, like going to, like, I'm like, why? Like, never, it was, I just didn't, I never had the appetite. Thank God for that. Um, it's not something I did. It's just, I just never had it. Uh, but this particular day, okay, this was actually med school, actually, after a very tough exam, um, we were going out to celebrate. It was supposed to be a dinner, Went out with a couple of friends. It was car, everybody car pulled into this one car. And we went to a dinner. After the dinner, one person, the person who was driving says, oh, let's just briefly stop at this club because this person is celebrating, da, 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 da. I've never, like, I don't, I'm like, you know what? Okay. I'm like, I'm just going to stand in the corner when you're ready to take us home, let us go home. It's like, I went there. I was just so uneasy. And for me, and the, part of what made it uneasy for me, I'm like, so I'm here. And I brought the Holy Spirit with me into this club. I was so confused. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like, there, there really it was a conscious awareness that wherever I carried my two feet to, I am carrying the person of God with me into such places. So for me, it's just, there's some places I just can't be. What is the Holy Spirit looking for in, in places like that? Like, he's not, he's not at peace. He's not at ease. He's like, why are you making me uncomfortable in this environment? So <laughs> having, I, but I, I think that really having that conscious awareness about his ever presence with us 24-7 really, really
really changes things. Um, this one I think is also key, the third one. I know I have one minute left. I'll speed through this. Um, talk, relate, and interact with him throughout the day, every waking moment. I think I've used this analogy before. Can you imagine if you're going to, on a long road trip, you're driving in the car and you have someone in the front seat of the car. You drove for six hours, throughout the whole six hours. You don't say one single word to the person. Even if you're fighting the person, huh? Like, not even one single word. Not a hi, not are you okay? Are you sleeping? Are you thirsty? Do you need to use, like, nothing. And, and some of us, that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. 24 hours will go by. 48 hours will go by. 72 hours will go by. Not one single word. And this, I'm not talking about prayer. This is different. I'm not talking about waking up and saying, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Da, da, da. No, like this is just interaction. I'm not talking about when you go to God in supplication prayer, or when you're interceding for someone. This is just, that's why when I was talking about that book, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Ben Heen, it changed my life. Ben Heen said from that day on, there was a particular turning point in his life. He woke up and every morning, the first words out of his lips were, Good Morning Holy Spirit. That really started his day as an interaction, just interaction. It, like I, I, if you're with me in my car and you're not physically there, I don't do when people are there, but you really think I'm crazy because I talk out loud, sometimes out loud, sometimes in person, but continuously, you have to be intentional. I'm talking to the Holy Spirit about everything and not just about what's spiritual, it's like about everything, like about my day. He really could be a, a physical, like he's as real to me as you are, you are to me sitting right next to me. The, the consciousness of the Holy Spirit being right next to me and me interacting, fellowshipping with him all through my day, every single waking moment. And really, sons and daughters of the Most High God, that really is what he desires from every single one of us. That level of relationship, that level of fellowship, continuously talking to him, interacting with him throughout the day. And when I talk about interaction, it's just not me talking, because otherwise that would make me crazy, right? It's him speaking back to me. That's the best part. He's, he, he's, I speak and he speaks. I speaks, he speaks. I listen, he listens. That, that's, that's what really the Holy Spirit wants from us. Interact with him throughout the, the day. You don't know where to start? Start by good morning, Holy Spirit, when you wake up in the morning. Say good morning, Holy Spirit. Talk to him about your day. Okay. So um, this is negative time. Spend time with him. That's the, that's the next one. Fellowship with him. Um, pray to know him more. I like it because you want to know someone more. Act like you just, oh, spend time with him. I remember something I was going to share with this one. Um, so I remember when my husband and I were, uh, were dating, he initially was in China. Um, and then we used to be on FaceTime almost 24-7, as much as our schedules were allowed. So I woke up to his FaceTime, I went to bed with his FaceTime. It's like, it's interesting, for those who've done long-distance relationships, I don't know if you know, so like you're really brushing your teeth, the person is on FaceTime, like why? Now I think about it, like what were we doing? <laughs> like you're not necessarily, oh, you're watching a movie, you're watching a movie together on FaceTime, like who does that? But <laughs> when, you're, when you're in love and you, you don't have the person right in front of you, you, you really capture every single, every single time it is to spend time. And we're 12 hours apart. So when it was 7 a.m. my time, it was 7 p.m. his time. But literally, I spent, as soon as I came home from work, in fact, from driving home from work around FaceTime to when I go to bed, FaceTime. <laughs> Even during prayer, FaceTime. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I fell asleep with him on FaceTime. But, and all those things were important, but our, 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 our knowledge or, of, of each other really deepened every month when he flew down from China to see me. So it, it was the first time I, sure, we got to know each other a little bit more, but nothing could replace actually the spending physical time with them. It's like you always went into a deeper intimacy or deeper knowledge of the person when you spend time with them. So nothing can really, really replace that. Don't, let's not shortchange that. We need to spend time with the Holy Spirit, spend time in his presence, spend time in worship, spend time in adoration. That will cause you to know the Holy Spirit more. Pray to know him more. Ask the Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit, I want to know you more. I want to walk in a deeper relationship with you. Would you help me? Study the word of God is another one that I put in here. You know, you can't get away from not storing the word of God if you want to know the person of the Holy Spirit and have a deeper relationship with him. And in addition to this, I would even put study 
study some books, some material, some good things that you know that people have written about the person of the Holy Spirit, you know, also helps you to really understand his person and his nature. That would also really help. I mentioned some of the books already, Forgotten God, uh, Francis Chan, and um, Good Morning Holy Spirit, Benny, and those are at least two that I know that I've read that really deepen my relationship with the Holy Spirit. And this was this number seven, was why it made us pause to talk about what grieves the Holy Spirit early on. You can have a deep relationship with someone and be doing the things that hurts them or wounds them or makes them sad, makes them uncomfortable, makes them unhappy, makes them distressed. So we know we talked earlier on about the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. So avoid the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> And as you grow deeper in your relationship with him, um, he will show you what grieves him. He will show you what he doesn't like. He will show you what makes him unhappy. And then it's our job also now to respond in obedience. You can say you love someone and you constantly, intentionally choose to wound them and wound them and hurt them continually. I begin to question where is the fruit of the actual love that you profess, you know? So you love the Holy Spirit. You, you're not, you respond like Catherine Coleman when you see that the Holy Spirit is grieved. Like her response just, it came out of someone who is really intimate and has a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. Um, I'll pause here for one quick question, if anybody has any, of my sister at the back and before we wrap up. Okay, I'll make um, can you explain the part where you said um, listening to the Holy Spirit, like during mm -hmm. the interaction? Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that um, I've been trying to work on, especially mm -hmm. when you say spend time and then the Holy Spirit can actually mm -hmm. speak back to you. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain that? Sure. So God is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person and he speaks. There are various ways that he speaks. A, a book I would recommend, and I will actually probably just gift that to you, is... Um, Four Ways to Hear God by Mark. I don't remember his last name. Someone remembers his last name. Let me know. Mark, who possibly? Wittler. Wittler, yeah. It, it's, uh, there are ways that, the ways that God speaks to every, the ways that God, the Holy Spirit speaks to every single person is different, it varies. Sometimes it's not just one way. But the first step is know that he's speaking, that when I'm talking, he's speaking. Sometimes that I've not been, tra I've not trained my ear or my inner witness to know when he's speaking and to receive it. So there are ways that we can be taught to know when the Holy Spirit is speaking and also to respond to him being speak, but he's speaking. Sometimes it's through actually a Bible's passage, sometimes it's impression, sometimes it's a thought, sometimes it's through a word, sometimes it's through when we journal he speaks. There are various ways that he speaks, but he does speak. For me personally, um, the Holy Spirit speaks to me most through impressions. It's like I get an impression. It's not, it's not a thought that comes from me. I know when my thoughts come. It's not a thought that comes like it, it, it just comes, and it's like a knowing, like I know that I know. It's, 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 it's almost like a voice on the inside. It might not be an audible voice, but it's just it really is and it's um it's strong it's it's uh it's not something i can resist it's like i know it's a knowing it's a sure knowing that's and and i i think as you grow in christian maturity because sometimes some people confuse the voice of the holy spirit with their own voice the voice of other things that are speaking to them other outside influences then you begin to know how to tease the two and know when the holy spirit is speaking versus your own voice versus you hearing something else but it's a process and we can talk more about that offline um, Pastor B wants to add to that too as we wrap up. Thank you so much for this teaching, Minister Noma. I just wanted to speak to that relating with the Holy Spirit that we've been discussing. It's so important. In our relationship, we should, we should give him room and also find out what he wants. And you spoke to that. And I just want to really... Because a lot of times when we approach God, even the Holy Spirit, is because, Holy Spirit, um, I need you to help me. I, what, what should I do today? But when you, when you are in a relationship with someone that you care about, you do ask them, what do you want to eat? Mm -hmm. Where are we going today? So mm -hmm. we should also, he, he has feelings. And that's why the woman was saying, don't grieve him. So sometimes, even when in the midst of your challenges, Go to the Holy Spirit and you can take your journal. Journal mm. is a good way that you can actually get his thoughts down. And it's Holy Spirit, what is on your what, what is on your agenda today? And spontaneous thoughts will start coming. That's mm. one of the ways the voice of God comes. Spontaneous thought that lights up 
in your, your mind. Yeah. It's spontaneous, but mm -hmm. you, it's pure. When you think deep into it, it's scriptural. When you think deep into it, it's pouring you to something good. The Holy Spirit will not tell you to go and slap your boss or send a <laughs> negative email. It will be something that lines up with the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. So it's spontaneous thought. That's where it starts from. But journaling is a very good way. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the days, we used to have pen pals. We write to them. You know, have Holy Spirit. Write to him. What is on the agenda this morning? I just wanted to add that. Thank you so much, Pastor P oh, PJ. Uh, just a word of encouragement. I think uh, sometimes when we think about hearing God, we automatically think of, wow, don't I have to get somewhere mm. with God, some levels, mm. before I start hearing God? But I think that's a very self-defeating uh, thought that is not actually aligned with the presentation of the scripture. Because uh, God is a father, he speaks yeah. to us through the Holy Spirit yeah. primarily. And the Father always finds a way of speaking to his child, his children. regardless mm -hmm. of how mature they are. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm speaking to my three-year-old, I, I, I stoop to their level. I yeah. speak in a funny way that I don't regularly speak mm -hmm. so that they can actually understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I use gestures. I, yeah. you, know, I, you know, I stoop down and I make those things. If I'm speaking to my 10-year-old, I kind of speak to them in accordance to their level of maturity. Yeah. So I don't really think hearing from God uh, is linked to how mature we are. It mm -hmm. is what we hear. Yeah. It is what he chooses to talk to us mm -hmm. about. Obviously increases or the depth mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. increases with our maturity. Absolutely. But I believe every believer should hear uh, from who God. is attentive, who desires mm -hmm. to hear from God, can hear from Absolutely. God. Absolutely. We just have to change our posture yeah. and really say, I want to hear Absolutely. from you. Uh, please speak to me. Absolutely. And ask him questions. So what do you think about this? Mm. How should I? And when we constantly inquire, we will somehow, he will find ways to speak to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't control how he does. He speaks to some people in dreams, visions, audible voice, thoughts, but we just have to know that he will speak to us amen. if we truly desire him. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, PJ. Um, so I am going to wrap up for the sake of time. I'll just read the conclusion. So the, the emphasis on the work of the Holy Spirit without the fundamental knowledge and foundation of the person of the Holy Spirit leads to us not cultivating a meaningful relationship with him. You cannot develop a relationship with an essence or power or force. Neither can you love, adore, or call upon him. A relationship with the Holy Spirit is an invitation into a better knowledge, understanding, and the experience of his works in the life of a believer. And the best part of it all is that he desires this relationship. He longs for intimacy. He longs for a closeness that allows you to call him your best friend. Um, something else I wrote here after this was printed. So beyond salvation, beyond being baptized in water, beyond the infilling or baptism of the Holy Spirit, he's waiting for you to meet him personally. He yearns for a lifelong relationship. And God will help us in Jesus' name, amen. So I hope all you all have been blessed this evening. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us online. Um, <clears throat> my prayer always at the end of every session is beyond what was covered here, beyond what we spoke about, beyond what we talked about, the Holy Spirit, who is the best teacher of all, we really expand his word and a deeper um, revelation in your heart about what he wants to say to you personally and individually. So we'll close out this session by um, doing our tithes and our offerings. Um, if anybody was joining us online for the first time or here in person, welcome. This is Agape House of Worship. Um, here you're not obligated, of course, to give during tithes and offerings. And thank you for joining us, by the way. Uh, but we encourage you, if you want to, to do so cheerfully. We have various means of giving in Agape. 
Um, all the means of giving are displayed on your screen, the text to give, the Zelle, and the Cash App. We've switched to Ahal FC for Cash App and the Zelle Finance at ahalfc.org. Um, so you can give as we wrap up the service. Give joyfully, give cheerfully, because God loves a cheerful giver. I will go through some of our announcements while people are giving their tithes and their offerings. Um, so, so um, Bible study, of course, is here every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Okay, so we'll continue next week, um, even in a Bible study. If you can make it, of course, in person, that'll be amazing. If not, please join us online. The Equip Conference is coming up this weekend, Friday and Saturday. How many people are excited? Yeah, this is for all Agape House of Worship workers and leaders. The theme for this conference is Teamwork Makes the Church Work. That's a good tag. Teamwork, I'm, I'm excited for my t-shirt. PJ promised it was a good t-shirt, so my anticipation is already high. So for those of you who didn't register early, sorry, no t-shirt for you, but you can still register at least to be part of the conference. Our registration closes this evening. You can register on our website, ahowfc.org. We also have the AHOW 101 membership class and 301 spiritual maturity class up and open for registration. All the classes take place virtually Tuesday, November 28th, Thursday, November 30th from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Again, you can register on our website, ahowfc.org uh, forward slash classes. And finally, oh, not finally, two more announcements from me. So this week is our AHAL uh, CTC, which is our church in the community. We're meeting this week, so some groups might have met already. I know my group, we're meeting tomorrow, but it's a small group um, community in AHAL. And so this is a small group of believers committed to learning, loving, and living the gospel together. It's not too late to join a CTC. I know we've been meeting all year long, but uh, better late than never, you know? <laughs> so if you're interested in joining a CTC, please visit our website again. Everything is on our website. It has a wealth of information. ahowfc.org and all the information will be there. Um, finally, this Sunday also is Healthcare Sunday, so you have friends and families who you know this will be a blessing to. Please invite them to be part of our service um, this evening. So I'm going to close out in prayer. I hope everyone has had an opportunity to give so far. Okay, sounds good. So Heavenly Father, we just bless you. We thank you, God, for this time this evening um, in fellowship and just learning about you, their Holy Spirit, and uh, sharing your word, understanding what you're saying to us. Lord, we ask, oh God, Lord Jesus, that you just help us. Holy Spirit, we ask that you help us, oh God, so that we can have a deeper and a meaningful relationship with you. Help us that the, the depth of our and the intimacy of our relationship with you will be even deeper. Help us to see you, oh God, the way, of oh God, you are supposed to be seen, to, to know you as God, to know your nature, to know your attributes, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything that we are supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be saying, so that we get to know you more on a deeper level. Lord, we just submit ourselves to you, precious Holy Spirit. You are a helper, you are a teacher, you are a comforter, you are a best friend. Lord, reveal yourself to us, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glorify Jesus, O God, in everything that we do, in everything that we say, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, O God, that thank you for the entrance of your word that brings light, and thank you, Lord, that as we go home today, you will continue to keep speaking to us. You continue to keep teaching us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So the fruit of this word that we've heard, oh God, will be multiplied even in our lives in Jesus' name. And thank you for the offering that we gave this evening. Lord, we ask that you bless it. Thank you for every hand, every family that gave. Thank you, Lord, for blessings even in their lives. Thank you for the offering that has been given. We continue to expand and multiply your kingdom so the church will continue to match forward in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And now let's say the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you all. And for those in house today, our dear sister Tokes who is celebrating has cake for you on the outside, on the lobby today. So that's a perk for those online. That's, that's a perk for coming to Bible study. You leave with some cake. So please join her as she celebrates her birthday by having some cake. Those join us online. God bless you. Have a great night all. <laughs> Don't make